Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for the introduction and thank you for having us here to talk today. So today I'm going to talk about the Cocoon platform. Uh, it's a closed, scalable, automated manufacturing system for cell therapy. And we say it's a kaleidoscope approach because the uh, Cocoon offers a bespoke way to approach manufacturing of cell therapies. So typical forward-looking slide here from us. Uh, for those that you may be or may not be aware, uh, the Cocoon's been in development for a number of years by a company called Octane Biotech out of Kingston, Ontario. Uh, about three years ago, Lanza entered into an evaluation agreement with them to evaluate the system. Uh, late last year, we decided to acquire Octane to further develop the system and push it more towards uh, the clinic as well as commercialization. The cocoon is uh, broken down into three primary components. The environmental unit, which is the shell on the right in the top photo. And in that shell, you contain the pumps and sensors as well as the uh, control for the four degree and 37 degree zones. So it's important to note that it is a dual zone system. The cassette, which is more or less the workhorse of the system, is closed. It's the only disposable and it's fully customizable to the process. It is process specific, so you can do adherent or suspension processes within the system. And the integrated cold chamber is so that you can internalize all of the reagents, cytokines, media, washes, whatever you like. Uh, you have up to six bags at your disposal and the total volume is around a liter and a half. The third component is the CPU software, more or less the brains. So there, the software controls pH, DO, and temperature. It uses the biofeedback from BH, pH and DO to modify aspects of the cell therapy process to maintain an optimal cell culture uh, environment. The software is fully Part 11 compliant. It incorporates electronic batch records along with full product traceability. And uh, we can jump into that in a, little, in a couple slides. So the cassette itself is broken down into a few main components. We've tried to incorporate a lot of the complex engineering within the cassette to make it easier to run these processes. So starting on the lower left, the bottom portion of the cassette is a four degree refrigeration zone. So anything that's in those bags will be kept at four degrees throughout the process. And again, this incorporates anything like culture media, washes, if you want cytokines, vector, etc. We have an input side of the cassette that allows for loading of cells. This can be done in a flexible nature with either a, a conical format or via a bag, whether it be a leukopact or something else. Uh, the top portion of the cassette is the 37 degree zone. So this is where the cells reside as well as media warms during the process. And that's where the, and the top is the expansion or proliferation chamber. And so this is where the cells live and expand throughout the process. On the front of the cassette, you'll notice there are some inputs. So these inputs uh, map to various areas throughout the cassette and they allow you to do things like introduce vector if that's something you like to do. They allow you to pull samples directly from the proliferation chamber for in-process cell, cell counts. You can pull media from one of the crossword reservoir or, or satellite bags for media sampling. Uh, and you can also output cells if that's where you would like to output cells. However, we do have an output portion of the cassette that allows you to output the cells through either a, a, a vial format, which is what's shown here, or via a bag or multiple bags. So to, to sum up, the Cocoon cassette allows you to do multiple unit operations. It is a single use, so it's the only disposable. It's a fully closed system, which is important to mention, so there is no mixing or contact of cells or media with any other part of the Cocoon, uh, and it's customizable to the, to the process. The software is an intuitive interface touchscreen computer. Uh, you can, uh, it's a more of a drag and drop for protocol development. Every tile that's shown on the left hand picture is going to be an aspect of the process that Cocoon is monitoring. If it's green, that means that everything is okay. If it's yellow, that means something has gone out of spec and come back in. If it goes red, out of spec and it'll contact you, it has full alert systems for that. As you move more towards clinical activities and you lock things down, we can institute a PAR 11 compliance module that institutes uh, varying levels of user access. So someone in the manufacturing facility would only have a certain level of access, whereas administrators would have further access. It is fully uh, compatible with SAP as well as fully compliant with uh, uh, electronic back record, batch records and audit trails. Scalability is something that uh, we're gonna have to start thinking of in cell therapy manufacturing quite soon. So uh, right now, 
the indications that were approved that you know, that were approved for are typically a couple thousand patients per year. But if we're going to hope to treat many, many more thousands of patients and not build millions upon millions of square feet of CDMO space, then we need a scalable solution. The solution that we bring with the cocoon is called the cocoon tree. This allows you to put six, eight, or ten cocoons within a meter squared. It's the same exact dimension in terms of the cocoon module. It's just that these cocoons are arrayed on their central shaft onto a tree. And so because it's a closed system, this would work quite well in a GMP facility in class B or class C space. And the reason why we have three different c configurations for the cocoon tree is that uh, GMP ceilings uh, come in varying heights and we don't want to exclude anybody based on ceiling height. So it's important to note that these use all the same components as the bench tops. The only difference is primarily going to be the way that you control them. There will be a central mainframe style uh, control, tentatively called Cocoon Central. And um, there will be a touchscreen on each tree to allow for scanning in as well as logging in. And I will mention that this is, uh, while this is a conceptual picture, this is not a concept. And we fully intend on uh, rolling it out in the first half of next year. So I think everybody's well aware of the uh, cell therapy manufacturing process as it currently goes. Uh, but just to review very briefly, you take patient's blood, isolate T cells or a mixed PBMC population, followed by an activation and then either a viral or non-viral transfection transduction step. You end up with reprogrammed uh, T cells that are targeting cancer cells. You expand them and then package them and give them back to the patient. Typically the process takes on average eight to 12 days and there are process steps every other day, many times requiring manual, manual interventions. This is a flow diagram, quite a long process in this case at 17 days, but here we're showing a manual process that requires a couple scale-up steps. And again, you can see every time that there's a manual process step is indicated by a vertical green bar. And if you compare that to semi-automated versus cocoon, in the cocoon scenario, more or less, you're loading the cocoon, loading the virus, and then the machine runs all the way through till the end. Moving to the clinic is obviously something we're very focused on with the cocoon. And so to kind of an announcement that was uh, announced a few months ago, we have a partnership with Sheba Medical Center in Israel to manufacture a clinical product for them. They have been treating a number of patients in a clinical trial for about a year to year and a half. And they have no shortage of patients, but they do have a shortage of space and manpower. So we're hoping to help with them with that, with the cocoon. We're currently in the process of translating their open manual process to the cocoon, and we hope to uh, dose the first patient uh, with material manufactured in the cocoon by, by the end of this year. So translating a process, typically you start with something like a G-Rex, maybe a, another format, and then we have to then move it to the cocoon. So how do we do that? Uh, it, kind of, it begins with a uh, paper exercise where we map out all the process steps. And then we identify the gaps that are there, if any. And then we then go through an optimization phase. So on the next slide is a video showing you some of the major process steps that happen during this paper exercise. It is not comprehensive. Uh, typically, these full presentations run about 150 or so slides because that's how many steps it takes for an eight to 10 day process. So this is very truncated. So this is the fluidics pathway for our lentiviral cassette. So you would begin by inputting cells into the cassette to the proliferation chamber, followed by moving media from the cold zone to the warm zone to be pre-warmed. Once warmed, we begin recirculation. As the cells proliferate, we increase the working volume by incorporating another reservoir. You load vector through one of the inputs for transduction. Following, you continue recirculation to expand the cells. You can do sample pools for in-process sampling for cell counts. Uh, you would then empty the chamber and wash the cells prior to output. You would move the cells to the satellite bag. You would then pull a sample to do a final cell count to determine density that you want. And then you would output the cells out of the bag. So to do the translation, we take a multi-level approach. The first is feasibility. It much involves the exercise that I just showed. And so there we uh, try to utilize readily available cassettes to demonstrate feasibility. We identify any gaps that, are, that exist so we can take that forward to optimization. During the optimization process, we make any uh, cassette design cha changes that are needed to fit the process within the cocoon. And then we do any kind of 
do any process optimization that's needed to meet clinical or success criteria. Following the last step is going to be validation where we demonstrate the process robustness as well as comparability to the original process and then of course documentation and transfer from there. So now I'm gonna show a, a quick snippet of some data that we've produced in the cocoon where we've compared the cocoon to a culture bag system. And in this we've done a HER2 lentiviral process. And in it what we've done is take the same protocol, same cell, same donor, split them and run part of these cells in the cocoon and part of these cells in a culture bag system. So these are mixed PBMC population. They were activated with either anti-CD328 Dynabeads or OKT3. We then did a transduction step with lentiviral. We had MOI of one. And then in the case of the culture bag, we did a manual media addition throughout the process. And for the cocoon, they were doing automated uh, partial media exchanges. To begin, as you can see at day 10, uh, regardless of the activation method, we were able to uh, get an increased number of total viable cells using the cocoon versus the culture bag system. The same can be said for, uh, well not the same, but the viability and CD3 purity was virtually unchanged between the cocoon and, and, uh, and culture bag system. In terms of transduction efficiency in the cocoon, we were able to achieve some higher transduction efficiency, which led to a total, trans total number of transduced cells compared to the culture bag. CD3 phenotype did not change appreciably between the two, and this is just looking at OKT3 activation. The same can be said for the Dynabeat activation, no appreciable change. And then looking at some outputs of, say, functionality, uh, percent cells that are positive for interferon gamma as well as TNF alpha. Again, there's not too much to write home about here because we're not trying to show necessarily in this case that the cocoon is better. We're trying to show it's comparable because that's going to be very important as we start to move processes from uh, open manual to a closed automated system. Looking at some data around uh, killing, they're very comparable in killing. In this case, looking at HER2 positive cells versus HER2 negative. So in summary, the Cocoon is an automated, closed, as well as scalable platform for cell therapy manufacturing, which addresses a lot of the pain points that we currently see. Uh, being One being clean space, uh, room clean, uh, clean room uh, space costs, as well as FTE usage, as well as scalability. Uh, translating a process begins with doing a paper exercise to see if it will fit within a current cassette. If not, we undergo a uh, validation optimization process where we can make process changes, cassette modifications as needed to fit the cassette. So here, uh, we're trying to make the machine fit the process rather than make the process fit the machine, which is generally how it's done uh, right now. A comparison between the cocoon and a culture bag system showed that we were able to outperform uh, in regards to cell number, transduction efficiency, total transduced cells, as well as CD3 positive transduced cells. There was no appreciable effect between the two systems for viability, purity, CD3 phenotype, or interferon gamma or TNF alpha positive cells. Uh, the resulting cells were comparable regardless of activation or system type, and that's the important point. Uh, and with that, I'd like to thank the teams that we have uh, at Shady Grove, which is in Rockville, Maryland, as along with the team in Kingston, which is the original Octane Bio team, specifically Ya Ling and Joe, who lead uh, a lot of the efforts in Rockville, uh, Nulo, who leads the biology group, Kelly, who is in the biology group, Ray Lin, who does a lot of the engineering around the cocoon, as well as Phil, who developed the software in-house. So I'm not the only one here you can talk to about the cocoon. Uh, we have three other members. Uh, they're sitting in the crowd right now in the back corner, probably hiding. Uh, Lisa Kralis, who's the head of BD for uh, CGT at Lanza. Uh, Jennifer Chang, who's the, uh, one of our associate directors at BD at, at Lanza, as well as Aton, who is the head of personalized medicine, uh, my boss. So and if you have any questions, feel free to find us, or you're free to contact Lanza. Uh, we have a site up uh, webpage on the cocoon and you can reach out for more information. Thank you.